I know that I'm very late to a party, but I guess it's better than never. So I finally played Hogwarts Legacy and I have quite a lot of things to say to you. And of course in this video we're going to be deciding whether this game is actually worth it to buy right now a few months after release or maybe uh, more depending on when you watch this. And we're going to be deciding whether it's worth it not just for the people who are the fans of the Harry Potter universe who were the most hyped for this game, but also for the ones who are not and are looking at this as just a game. So without further ado, let's just get it started. And as always as every single one of my videos, I'm going to be giving you the answer right away to not waste your time. and the answer is this, for the Harry Potter fans, well, absolutely. This game is fantastic, it just oozes with the familiar atmosphere from the movies and books. The world is built so well that the places are immediately recognizable and feels very warm to your heart. However, if you are expecting the story that will be topping Harry Potter's story, at least any books, or at least be on the level of them, well, it's not. But if you are expecting something that complements this universe and adds to it and expands it, then well, it's pretty great. What about non-Harry Potter fans? Well, for those people, it's a bit more difficult to sell. Don't get me wrong, not because it's a bad game, it's a good game and it's above average in every aspect. But for those, but for non-Harry Potter fans, this game might be a little bit dragged out and overly filled with an exposition because yeah, it's a bit unique universe compared to every other fantasy universe. So it needs a bit more of exposition and it uses your role as a student well quite extensively. So it might be a little bit tiring for you if you want to get into game for the combat because the yeah, game really opens up only around the second half. But to understand why it's good or it's bad, you need to understand what the game is. So let's just discuss that. Oh, and by the way, our Steam Curator page is already up and running. So if you want to see all of my reviews, videos, and a little bit of text review right there on Steam before you're going to buy anything, just go and follow us there on Steam so that you will not miss my reviews when you are buying the games. Now back to the video. First things first, what is Hogwarts Legacy? Hogwarts Legacy is open world action RPG set in the Harry Potter universe. You're playing in late 1800s, more than a century before Harry Potter movies or books. And you are playing as a Hogwarts student of your creation and you're starting immediately at your fifth year. This is your first time getting Hogwarts and it's actually pretty good that you're starting immediately with the fifth year because this allows you to have an access to practically everything that Hogwarts can offer. Yeah, and of course, any, anything before that will be just way too young to do anything meaningful in the game. I will not be uh, spoiling the story to you even though it's been a few months since they came out but maybe you want to buy this game on a deep sales. But I will tell you that, that the game is about uncovering the ancient secrets of Hogwarts and unlocking the secrets of ancient magic and alongside dealing with the rebellious goblins and well other dark wizards and things like that. But don't worry I'm not gonna be spoiling literally anything because yeah people want to play this game for the story and for the lore so yeah well, I'm not gonna be spoiling it well tainting any of this. And to be fair story wise well it did not blow me away it's okay it's good it's serviceable it just gives you things to do and it is made in a way to be more or less kind of like a Harry Potter movies or books, but it's not as good. I guess that's mainly because of the characters, because uh, yeah, even though side characters are, are quite fleshed out and to be fair, Hogwarts here is not very big and there are not a very, very many students. You can see familiar faces practically everywhere. Your own main character is, well, kind of, well, bland. No matter how, how, no matter how we will try to create him or her, I, it's kind of bland. I didn't like this character and in the Harry Potter movies you had your Harry, your Hermione, your Ron and it felt good and here it's well it's not. I kind of cannot relate with my character. The overall story is okay but where the story excels is at least for me as a Harry Potter fan is how it actually delivers you this story. You see in this game you are not some someone that is special. Well you are kind of special but you're not special in this world as your or not maybe political or society plays. Uh, you are just a regular student and you need to take your classes, you need to learn how to use magic and you need to do all the uh, curricular or extracurricular activities before you're gonna go and save the world. And I like this. And I like this a lot. You need to go and take your classes. You need to listen to your teachers. Your teachers will be contacting you, teaching you different spells. You need to uh, perform different assignments. And usually assignments are kind of like a mini quests. And they're kind of made to be an additional tutorials, which is pretty cool. I liked this type of mechanic because this game is not just a tooltip that shows you text on the screen and tells you, oh, go and do this. You will learn this or you know this right now. It literally teaches you every single thing bit by bit. And every teacher is actually easy 
involved in your well, education. And not just teachers, also with students are involved in your education and all the side people as well. Like for example, one of your classmates from Slytherin, he will actually teach you different type of dark magic that you can use to be more powerful and more, well, and more destructive as well. And, and also you gain additional quests from uh, the shop givers in Hogsmeade and things like that. And it just adds all the things together and fleshes out the world quite a bit. And overall, I kind of liked the story. It's a bit dragged, to be fair. The first 10 to 12 hours is a bit dragged because you're actually learning all those spells because you have multiple spells that you need to learn and it will take time until you will learn them and until uh, the professors will actually teach you because it's uh, the part of the main quest. But after that, game actually uh, accelerates a little bit. Before that, you don't have a lot of combat. You don't have a lot of world exploration. After that, you do have. However, speaking of world exploration combat, well, this is the part of the game that I kind of actually like. World is pretty large, but not overly huge. So main two places that you have is of course your Hogwarts castle and your Hogsmeade village. And then there are also highlands that are well territory around these places and they are quite extensive. It's not insanely huge that will take you half an hour to get from one end to another. It won't, but it's actually done in a way that makes it feel quite a bit dense. It's much, much better in Hogwarts and Hogsmeade and a bit uh, quite worse in an open world because yeah, they're not they're not that many things, but it's there are quite a lot of things to do in this world. Traveling wise, you can of course well, travel by foot everywhere, but you have also a few other different modes of transportation. Well, second is of course using your fast travel. You are unlocking fast travel points everywhere in the world, in, especially in Hogwarts because Hogwarts has castle is huge and you need to well visit a lot of floors and places, and with the help of uh, Fast travel, it's quite quick and it will get you everywhere you want. Also, the same goes to the open world as well. But as you progress in the game, you also unlock your broom, which is quite fascinating to travel. Uh, the controls are weird, but it's, well, it's okay. Uh, it's manageable. It, on a PC, the control is a bit weird, but for me, it helped me that I have my control and space buttons close to each other, or both on my thumb, because I have a weird keyboard like that. And because the space is ascend and control is descend, for me, it was easy because I had all the buttons, or, well, both buttons assigned to my thumb. But for many others, it might be a little difficult. And also you unlock the beast that you can travel with. I'm not gonna be spoiling again what beast it is, but of course you most likely know already. But still, you can well, travel with the, you can travel with this mode of transportations in this world. And when you travel uh, and use the Revelio spell, and I am gonna talk about Revelio spell in a second, you actually can see all the different points of interest around you. So you don't need to actually well search for a lot of those things. You see all the different points of interest, and you can then go and travel and do there, whatever activities that you want to do there. Speaking of activities, now let's talk about overall gameplay loop because this is important thing. Well, overall gameplay loop is pretty interesting and well, even though quests are nothing exceptional and amazing, there are quite a lot of variety of using different spells for solving different uh, environmental puzzles around you. Like, like you're losing a Lumo spell to lure a, a picture frame moth to the frame and things like that helps you to, well, keep the game fresh and to keep you, uh, keeps your exploration pretty interesting. Speaking of exploration, the entire game is built around the field guide. This is the special book uh, which has its uh, well pages torn apart and spread around the world and your goal is to find those pages. You travel around and you find those pages and these, those pages contain different lore and contain different information about the world around you. And this is your main way to gain XP in the game because when you get those pages, you gain an XP. But then those pages can be obtained in a few different ways. First is finding them and revealing them with reveal your spell. Reveal your spell is just a revealing spell which allows you to reveal everything that is hidden around you. But this is probably the most frustrating thing about this game. Because when you use reveal your spell, if there is... Um, something interesting around you, meaning that uh, the field guide page, you will hear the ping in this direction. But unless you are looking at the direction where the page is and just using the value at that place, the page will not reveal itself. I mean that it will have some silhouette and it will have ping, but it will not reveal itself for you to get. And this just forces you to using your value spell everywhere and it becomes frustrating very very quickly especially in Hogwarts because there are a lot of pages there plus you have some pages that are flying around and you and you need to use an Accio spell to get them and yeah there are there are quite a lot of frustrating things there it's also a lot of puzzles give you uh, this pages and this 
allows you to well, gain your levels very quickly in the beginning of the game. And yeah, game has the leveling system and oh, a lot of content is level gated in the game because your enemies have levels as well. And because of this system, you have you are gaining levels very quickly in the beginning because the most pages are in Hogwarts and they are close together and you are gaining a lot of a lot of a lot of different a lot of a lot of XP very quickly. And the same goes with Hogsmeade and all the different places that you are visiting early in the game. And this way you will gain level you will become easily level 20 even but even before reaching level 10 quests however later in the game after level maybe 25 30 the xp gain is much slower because yeah you don't have a lot of uh, that many field uh, field guides and you don't have that many quests left so that's for that reason it's a bit it's not as fast and later in the game as it is in the beginning also around a few hours in the game you unlock different talents that will allow you to use to upgrade your spells and become more powerful and it's vital to upgrade those because this will allow you to well you become much more powerful and well play the game much easier now speaking of the game playing that uh, playing game much easier let's talk about the combat because combat is probably the best part of this game because combat is insanely 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 good at least uh, what, what i think so it's a mix of action combat kind of like a shootery thing and like your souls like because yours is a bunch of parries blocks and evasions so you have your multiple spells each spell have different schools and they're usually color coded and the combat spells usually are either in red color in yellow color or in purple color you also have the green spells those are your unforgivable curses but we're not going to talk talking about uh, those just yet and each of these spells have different effects like setting enemies on fire lifting them up smacking them down pull, pushing them towards you or pulling them away from you disarming them and things like that like freezing them in space and, or just literally freezing them and things like that but you also have your basic cast basic cast is your like basic damaging spell every spell except for a basic cast have all the have their cooldown so you need to be very careful and you also have a multiple hot bars well that you unlock from the talents on the main hot bar you have your four four spells and you can have up to four different hot bars giving you around 16 spells being able to use pretty, pretty much at the same time because you can switch between them very very quickly so what happens is that m most of the enemies when you fight or when you fight against them will have a special shield around them like for example a yellow shield uh, you will need to use this yellow magic to break this shield and then fight them without those shields and enemies also attack you and you need to use a shield of your own to block it and if you block it on time you will turn your attack or add a bunch of different additional effects depending on what talents that you use you also have a cues when enemies are attacking you allowing you to block or evade because some attacks are unblockable you, you can also use the potions to uh, bolster your uh, offensive or defensive abilities and you also have multiple additional well, things that you can use uh, additional items like for example you can use a cabbage that eats people <laughs> so yeah it's pretty interesting thing to have additionally you also have a stealth so uh, if you upgrade your stealth skill you can actually well win a lot of combat before even starting them. But overall, all those combat things makes the combat very fast and very skill-based and very cinematic. The fights look awesome, especially against other wizards. And it's it looks amazing. If you liked how the combat how if you like how the combats looked, for example, in Order of the Phoenix in Harry Potter, you're gonna love it here. And probably the combat is the best part of the game. It's not overly difficult. It's a bit difficult to understand at first. Uh, because, yeah, you might feel a bit way too powerful. And you might not you be using, you know, like, parries and evades uh, more effectively. But as you'll understand the gist of it, even normal and even hard difficulty is not that difficult. I played game on normal through and through. And I did not die a single time. And it was never overly difficult. But now let's get into the question of whether it is worth it to buy meaning that whether it's worth it the money that it's asking and well right now at the moment because game is pretty new it did not have any substantial discounts well it did not have any discounts the game is at $60 full price at the tier 1 countries still and it's it's $27 full price uh, full price for the tier 2 countries so is this game worth it well to be fair because the game is quite extensive and easily will give you 50 to 60 hours of extensive gameplay if you will try to do everything and explore the or things like that it's well worth it full price actually I'm, I'm living in tier 2 countries I paid $27 for the full price but I'm not regretting this at all and I rarely absolutely rarely buying the games for the full price most of the games that I bought I played on the release I never paid for them any price it's usually either given to me for free or it's a part of the game pass or EA play pro things like that I rarely
really buy a game for the full price. I did for this one, but not on release. I did it. Uh, I did it only a few weeks ago. But still, it was absolutely worth it. And I would probably pay the six dollars for this game as well. But that's coming from the Harry Potter fan. If you are not a Harry Potter fan, and for you the game costs sixty dollars, maybe I would wait a bit. Maybe I would wait for a little bit of discount, like for example on summer sale or or fall sale or winter sale, to get this game for a discounted price. Because just just to be sure, I doubt that you will not like it. But this is to say just to be sure. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in whether the, how, how game ran on a PC, it ran perfectly. I did not encounter any issues with the game. And I should not have because the game could be run even on a Steam Deck. So yeah, it's Steam, it's Steam Deck verified. So my overall verdict is this, this game is amazing game for every Harry Potter fan and it's great game overall. Yes, it has some flaws like over extensive exposition and a lot of different mechanics and tutorials, but it's doing it in a, but it's doing it in a great way and I simply loved it. Except for the Revelio part, like waving your wand everywhere and, and screaming Revelio is not fun. That's that's the thing that I didn't like. Our YouTube memberships are up and running. And if you like videos done by me and if you like the reviews that I put out and everything else as well, consider hitting the join button near the subscribe button under this video. This might not be a lot for you, at least for some of you, but it will be tremendous help for me keeping this channel going. Well, I guess this will be for today. Thank you for being here with me. Like the video if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. See ya.